Tinatato Kato, good evening. The coalition government officially got to work today, holding its first proper cabinet meeting and signing off its 100-day plan. The 49-point checklist includes a lot of stop work notices and repealing of Labour's laws. On the scrap heap, the Auckland fuel tax, the clean car discount, speed limit reductions, the prisoner reduction target, Labour's RMA reforms, fair pay agreements, the mega polytech merger, Tipukenga, Auckland Light Rail, gun laws, all work relating to He Puapua, the co-governance document, the Māori Health Authority, and the smoke-free laws. But wait, there's more. The new government will also look to start implementing some policies of its own, including legislation to reintroduce the 90-day employment trial, ban cell phones in schools, ban gang patches, set health targets for wait times and cancer treatment, and allow the sale of pseudoephedrine cold medicine in pharmacies. Political editor Jenna Lynch has more. A hop, skip and a jump to the podium of power. Welcome to what is our very first post-Cabinet press conference in the beginning of the 54th Parliament. And with that, the countdown on outcomes has begun. I am determined to start early and to work incredibly quickly to put in place the foundations of the programme of work that we have identified that is critical to get this country on the right track again. And that work starts today. On day three of the coalition government, the PM's published his official 100-day plan. For this coalition government's first 100 days in office. It is ambitious, but it is necessary in order to bring about the relief to New Zealanders who have been doing it tough for way too long. 49 policies he's promising to get done by March, a document for the public to hold him accountable to. We know we're biting off a lot in order to get it done, but we're determined to do so. About 20 of the action points are repealing what Labor did, including three waters, RMA reforms, fuel taxes and workplace legislation like fair pay agreements. We are over the talk, we are over the conversation, we now need to get things done. The coalition also committing to implementing education changes requiring an hour reach of maths, reading and writing a day, as well as beginning work on a national infrastructure agency, a priority track to get emergency housing tenants into homes and taking steps to extend breast cancer screening to those up to age 74. I think um, we're going to do more in 100 days than this government did in the last six years, so uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to getting into work. 49 steps to getting the country back to basics. We are determined, we are absolutely determined to rebuild the economy to lower the cost of living. We are determined to actually deal with law and order and we're determined to deliver public services. Luxon attempting to regain control of his narrative after the first days of this government have been marred by an off-script deputy. You can't defend $55 million of bribery. But refusing to pull Peters into line, laughing it off. Oh, it's not the way I would describe it, but I actually also don't support the fund either. For the very reason that it actually leads to perceptions of bias, rightly or wrongly. Um, I just say to you, um, you know, that that's the perception. Whether that's real or not doesn't really matter. Not how he would have said it, but denying his deputy undermined him. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, Winston's allowed to make his remarks in the way that he chooses. He may not express it in the way that I do it. Not willing to condemn Peters falsely accusing the media of taking a bribe. Do you find what Winston Peters said acceptable? Well, it's not the way that I would have expressed it, but I understand the frustration with the fund, as many New Zealanders do as well. He needs to show some leadership and make it clear to Winston Peters that his comments are unacceptable choosing not to set an expectation of his cabinet, rather telling the public to adjust their expectations. We're going to say things in different ways uh, as different leaders and as different members of that team in a coalition government, and that's fine, that's acceptable. Now off to get the country and his brand new government back on track. Well, OK, Jenna, a lengthy agenda for the first 100 days. Can they achieve it? Cleverly, a lot of this list has been put together in a way that it's quite difficult to measure whether it's been achieved. So a lot of it starts with investigate doing or take first steps towards. The last government was absolutely dogged by its inability to deliver on major promises. The current government, when in opposition, absolutely eviscerated them for it. To, so to avoid the same curse, they need to get some runs on the board quickly. Doing all of the repeal stuff is an easy way to do that because you can get quite a lot done without a lot of government grunt work required to get there. 
The new honeymoon phase has been pretty much non-existent for this Prime Minister, basically because his deputy rode a bronco through the wedding and started flipping tables upside down. But Christopher Luxon made it clear today he is not going to try and tame Winston Peters. Perhaps he can't, perhaps Winston Peters is untamable. But what he could have done is act like a Prime Minister and try and patch over some of the social disharmony, try and rebuild faith and trust in institutions, and that includes the media. Instead, he has given a leash for both Winston Peters and David Seymour to pretty much say what they want without consequence and therefore set a standard for his new government. Our political editor, Jenna Lynch, there live from Parliament in Akwe.